Hello, welcome to How to Triathlon. In this video, I'll walk through the steps to do your first triathlon. Um, you know, I'm aiming for someone who's completely new to the sport. If you already know what you're doing, there are many other resources on YouTube, you know, many great videos done by professional triathletes um, that you can watch. Um, so for this particular one, I'm aiming more towards uh, people who are completely new to the sport. And I hope you enjoy the video. So what is a triathlon? Um, it is a race involving a swim, a bike, and running. Um, but there's actually five different stages because there are also uh, what we call T1 and T2, which are the transitions involved between the you know swimming and biking and also biking and running. Um, and there are five major distances for triathlons, um, starting with the super sprint, uh, which is 400 meters of swimming, 10K of biking and 2.5K of running. And sometimes for super sprint, the bike and the run part is a little bit loose. It really depends on the organizers, uh, but it's roughly around this distance. Um, I have done super sprints in which um, the run is a 5K run, for example example um, and you know and then you you know work your way up right from super sprint to sprint to an Olympic uh, which is then getting very close to doing a, an a, a Ironman 70.3 or a half Ironman um, so you are really looking at uh, for half Ironman um, about 2k of swimming uh, about 90k of biking and then a half marathon um, and then a full Ironman is a very hard one, right? You're looking at about 4K of swimming, 180K, uh, 180K of bike ride, and then a full marathon after all this, right? So for this particular uh, you know, video, we are aiming for the super sprint. Um, so this is, you know, 400 meters of swimming, 10K of biking, and 2.5K of running. So how do you plan for your first triathlon? Um, so the first question you have to ask yourself, right, is how long will it take you to train for uh, the super sprint distance, right? 400 meters of swimming, 10K of biking, and then about, you know, 3K of running. Um, for most people, I would imagine that, you know, like the biking part and running part are not going to be the biggest challenge for most people. Uh, for, for people, generally speaking, is the swimming part, right? Unless you're already you know, a great swimmer, um, 400 meters of swimming could be intimidating for someone completely new to swimming or new to the sport. Um, then I would suggest looking for local races and try to look for one with a super sprint event. Um, usually you should be able to find one near where you live, um, but sometimes, um, you know, in many places, the sprint are the only distance that's available um, and with that you would need to train a little bit harder and I hope you know the rest of this video will still be useful for you. Uh, I'm aiming more towards training for super sprint uh, but a lot of the information I share in this video will also apply for uh, doing a sprint race. Um, and then you have to start thinking about you know equipment. Um, so you know for the bare minimum that you need, right? For swimming, you would need swimming goggles. Um, you you need a swimsuit and ideally a wetsuit. Um, to be honest, for 400 meters, um, unless you are completely new to swimming, um, you don't really need a wetsuit. But having a wetsuit does help a lot, especially um, if the race you know tends to be in, you know in the fall or in the spring when the water temperature is a little bit colder, um, or you know you can you can really use some help, right? Uh, floating. Um, on, on the surface. And the wetsuit will really give you um, the buoyancy that you need it um, to flow on the surface. Uh, it just generally make the swim a lot easier. Um, and talking about swimsuit, um, you know, obviously you can do your first one, you know, with a swimsuit or like a swim jammers. Um, but, you know, you may want to consider um, investing in a tri suit. Uh, which could be a one-piece tri suit, um, you know that in, you know that you can put your body. And a tri suit is something that you know has the you know little bit of padding for you know for biking, so that would make the the biking part a little bit easier. But for super sprint distance, is definitely not needed. So it's totally up to you on whether you want to invest. And in addition to tri suits, um, especially for men, um, you can also buy um, like a tri pants, right? Which is like uh, cycling pants, but with a smaller padding. 
um, so that it will make your run a little bit easier. And then you can just get a tri top, right, that you can put on. Um, and for the biking part, uh, you know, very standard equipment here. You need a bicycle, helmet, uh, you know, optionally a jersey if you're not um, going to have a tri suit or a tri top, um, and bike cleats, right? Uh, if you have cleats, uh, if you have like, a, you know, um, those uh, special kind of um, um, pedals like on your bike. Um, that, you know, you would need those like Shimano SPD or, you know, depending on your favorite, right, different kind of bike uh, cleats for riding a bike. And <clears throat> running part is simplest, you just need running shoes, right? And if you're riding a bike with just uh, like, you know, the standard paddle, you can just use your running shoes for biking as well. Um, so for me particularly, how did I plan my first race, right? So um, I, I'll probably talk about my motivation to do triathlon in a different video, but for my first race, which was a super sprint in Seattle, um, I could hardly swim at that time, right? I could swim two laps, about 50 meters. So I just picked a race about eight weeks out I, as a forcing function to really get myself to learn swimming. Um, and I just focus on, you know, doing a 400 me to swim really well and just some basic open water swimming technique which i'll touch on later on in this talk um and for me personally i don't worry about the bike and the run because i just want to finish the race and if i can complete the swimming part i can just take it easy you know on the biking part and the run part so that's how i plan for my first super sprint Okay, so once you come up with a plan, the next step is to start training, right? So the swimming is probably the most intimidating part for most people. So I'll spend a little bit more time talking about this. Um, the goal is to swim 400 meters, right? Which is about uh, 16 laps in a 25 meters swimming pool and probably around like 20 laps uh, or 18 laps in uh, 25 yards uh, swimming pool. Um, so, you know, for me, for example, I can only do two laps initially, so I just slowly work my way up, right? So I just do like two laps without stopping. I just keep training on that, and then I work my way up to longer distances, right? Being able to do four laps, eight laps, and then 16 laps. Um, and because you'll be swimming in open water, right? Typically in a lake, uh, or in some cases, um, you know, in the ocean, uh, I would well, I would suggest if you're doing your first one, try to do it in the lake, right? So you don't have to deal with the waves, but um, uh, you should train a little bit more than 400 meters. I would just say, you know, you should be able to do 500 meters comfortably um, because uh, we'll touch on sighting later on, um, you know, because you'll be swimming in open water, there won't be a line that you can see, right? So a lot of the, so your navigation is going to base on your sighting. And, you know, for a new swimmer, uh, new open water swimmer like me, right? I tend to swim like in a, in a zigzag pattern, right? Um, so, you know, just being able to swim a little bit longer will make your swim a lot more comfortable. Um, and I also recommend joining like, you know, like a master swim, if you have something like that, you know, or some just at frequent adult swim meet, um, so that you're swimming at least like three times a week, especially if you're someone who need to work on your, um, your swimming skills. Um, so, you know, um, so with all that going on, right, you should be able to uh, work your way up to uh, 400 meters, you know, over a period of time. Um, and then once you get comfortable swimming, you can start learning uh, basic sighting in the pool. And there are many great videos on YouTube about uh, open water swimming and sighting. So I would just have you, you know, look for those videos. But the basic idea is, you know, after every a couple strokes, right? So let's say around two strokes or three strokes, um, you know, when you're about to breathe, you know, you just lift your head a little bit, you know, uh, higher so that you can see what's in front of you, right? Um, and the key part about sighting is, you know, you have to pick some landmark, right, in front of you that you want to aim for, right? And then every time you lift up your head, you're making sure that you're still aiming towards, swimming towards that landmark. Um, and, you know, for the 400 meter swim, 
usually it's not that complicated, right? So you don't have to, you know, practice a lot, but do just practice a little bit so that you're not completely off, right, when you're swimming. Um, and also I would suggest practice swimming like closely with your friend next to you, right? And ideally so close to you that you'll be hitting them, right? Um, and maybe they, they will hit you in some places um, so that, you know, you can you get a sense of what it's like to swim with other swimmer close to you, right? Um, and, um, and also, you know, <laughs> don't repeat my mistake, right? So for me, I have never swim open water until my race, right? So I signed up for super swim race and on race day, that's the first time I ever swim in a lake. Don't do that. <laughs> um, it's, it was not fun. And I'll touch on that a little bit later on why it was not fun. But um, no, just go to, you know, a lake um, or you know, in some cases like a beach in open ocean uh, and just learn a little bit about uh, swimming in open water. Um, and one of the best thing you can get for this is a swim buoy, right? So it is, uh, you know, um, a device that you basically, you know, you can blow it up and then it will, um, it will have a strap that you tie to your waist and it will basically, you know, it, and then you won't actually rec uh, realize this on your body once you start swimming. You, so you're basically tugging along, right? The swim buoy and anytime, let's say you're tired in the middle of the lake or in the ocean, you can just pull the buoy over, right? And then you can just, I, I'll just rest my hand on it. And it's like a pillow in the middle of the ocean, right? It's floating. Um, so you can take as long of a break as you need, right? Um, and for me, the swim buoy was really um, the key thing that I got that makes me feel comfortable swimming in open water. Next, we'll talk about uh, biking a little bit. Um, if you're aiming for a super sprint event, you just, you know, talk about six miles of biking. Um, so it's very doable. It's, it's not difficult to do. And, you know, you don't need any special bike, right? You may uh, read or heard about like triathlon bikes, um, you know, with the, um, the armrest on the front. Don't worry about that at all. Um, I would not suggest investing in tri bike until you are you know you're getting better and you really like doing triathlons and you want to doing like long distance like a half iron man or something then you know then you may want to get something nicer um you know any road bike would do but i would suggest like not using a mountain bike um, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference uh for six miles of uh for biking um, the part that I think uh, for us, you know, that you may want to practice if you're not someone who, you know, who are frequently riding a bicycle, is just getting used to riding, you know, on the shoulder of the road, right? Because um, for some of the races, they don't necessarily have a completely uh, closed uh, course, right? So you'll be riding with vehicle traffic next to you. Uh, so, you know, just practice on riding on the shoulder and just getting comfortable doing that right with traffic next to you will be great um and if you're very new to cycling <clears throat> um i would just focus on you know look up youtube videos on uh you know bike handling skills um and also um you know just work on those drills you know in in a park or in a in a parking lot right where you can just um you know uh, get comfortable on a bicycle and for me personally you know when I actually learned biking pretty late um, you know uh, and one thing that I think is use was useful for me was you know when I turn initially I would just focus on turning the handlebar right to initiate the turn and later on you know you would, I just learned that you know you should really start from my hip right so just you know when you're ready to let's say you know, to make a right turn, just lean your body, right? The hip, just lean your body a little bit to the right and let the, you know, the bike would then, you know, and just keep looking at where you want to go. You know, the, the bike, your body will just handle the rest. The bike will follow. Um, that would just make the turn a lot smoother. Um, and I think the key thing with biking and running is just do break workout, which I'll touch on in a minute. Um, that's really the key part that you need to uh, focus on. Yep, so similar to biking, right, for running uh, 2.5K or 1.6 miles is not difficult to do for most people, right? You may not be a fast runner, you may not even be a runner uh, who, you know, run regularly, but it's not a difficult thing to do. And if you are just completely, completely new to running, um, <clears throat> I would just suggest, you know, go to a local um, 
um, store, you know, specialized on running shoes, just talk to the people there. Um, they will probably have you, um, you know, walk or run on a treadmill and decide like a good, you know, a good pair of running shoes for you. And then you can just start it, you know, just start working on your distances. Maybe start with like a 1K run, you know, take some break, you know, and then just work your way up to 2.5. Um, I think most people can do it over two to four weeks. Definitely not difficult to do at all. The difficult part is the brick workout. So what is a brick workout? It basically involves biking and then immediately switching over to bike, uh, to running, right? So um, so if you think about you know the super sprint distance, you know once you you know are ready to do this, uh, I would suggest you know doing like you know the six mile bike ride and then just immediately switching over to do a 1.6 mile run, right? So you're doing the actual distance in the super sprint race. Um, the part that you realize that is super difficult is when you start running, right? Your legs, it would just feel like, it, like for me personally, the legs, it felt like it was disconnected by, from my body, right? It was not, because you've been cycling for a while, when you switch over to running immediately, you, like my legs would lock up, right? In some way, or just become extremely sore. So you just want to take it really easy when you do, uh, when you transition over to biking, uh, to running. And, you know, don't push too hard. Just slowly, you know, uh, work on, work on uh, um, the transition. And the more you do this, the more your body will get adjusted. And then you won't even realize, you know, like anymore, right? That you're doing this. And this is also like the brick workout is also a great way to try out your gear, right? So let's say if you have um, like a tri suits or tri pants, right? It's just very nice to just, you know, like the way I would practice this in, you know, I'll ride my bike in a bike trail. I would ride back to my car. I would, you know, put my, uh, hang up my bike, um, store it in my car, and then, you know, immediately start running, right? Uh, so I'll be basically wearing the same pants, right? Um, and it's just very good to just get a sense of what it feels like, you know, uh, running in the in the tri pants. Um, or if you decided to, you know, uh, just use your swimming trunk or, or swimming jammers, right, for your biking and running as well, uh, this is also a great way to just get a sense of what it would feel like, right? If you want to use your jammers, uh, biking with your jammers or running with your jammers. All right. So let's think. Uh, let's talk about the race day, right? So um, you know, after a couple of weeks, you will be ready to do the super sprint triathlon. Um, and you know, the week before the race, you know, just just take a you know just taper, right? Just uh, take a week off. Don't do it. Don't focus. Don't train anymore. You have trained enough, right? And just let your body rest. Um, and for me personally, right. Uh, I'm doing, you know, a super sprint the first time. I just want to finish um, because I have such a big problem with swimming. Uh, I do not worry about the time, and I suggest you to do the same, right? Uh, but the key thing is don't repeat what I don't repeat what I did wrong, right? Which was um, last minute equipment changes. So for me personally, I have never uh, wore a wetsuit before ever in my life. And I got a wetsuit like the day before my race, right? And I decided to wear it on race day. Uh, it was nice, but it was def it was nice to have the wetsuit, but it was definitely not fun at all because I just not I was not used to how tight the wetsuit fits to my body. And when I started swimming, it was just you know it was super awful, right? Like I feel like oh my arms are restricted. Um, there are so many things that doesn't feel right. So don't do this, right? Um, just you know, um, just you know use the same gear that you use for your practice. And um, also before the race day, I would just suggest laying out all your gear on the floor. And then you know, and we'll touch on gear, the gear list in the upcoming slide. But I would just suggest laying out like all your swim stuff in one area, right? And then your bike stuff, and then your run stuff, and then just kind of go through your mind to imagine how you would change, right, during transition, right? Uh, on okay, I will, you know, <clears throat> I will remove my wetsuit, I will remove my swim cap goggle, I will put on, you know, my uh, my glasses, my bike helmet, and so forth, right? So just going through, you know, um, your mind, just making sure you didn't leave any gear behind, right? Um, or, leave out, uh, or left out any gear. Um, 
but I would also really suggest like just practice the transition at least once before the race, right? So really putting on all the gear and then just learning, the, just practicing, taking them off, putting the other set on, um, that will help a lot in your transition, right? To make sure everything will go smoothly. Um, and, um, you know, for me personally, because also I, uh, I wear prescription glasses, so I always have to remember, you know, after swimming, I have to put the glasses on and then my helmet on and so forth, right? And once you're done with all this, right, pack everything in your backpack, right? And only leave out the swim layer, uh, whether it's a jammer or a tri-suit um, that you will wear, you know, the first thing that you wear on race day, right? Um, and if you're going to record this on your watch, and most people use like a Garmin watch or an Apple watch, uh, just practice how to switch activities right in multi-sport mode uh the watches these days usually have it in on garmin watches they call it triathlon on apple watches i think they call it multi-sport right so just go into the sport mode multi-sport mode turn it on just knowing what button to press right to transition from biking to t1 uh, sorry, from swimming to T1, to biking, to T2, and then to running, and then stopping at the end. Um, so that will also help you a lot, right, when you want to record, you know, your first ever triathlon. Okay, now let's talk about the swim gear, right? Um, so, um, you know, after you sign up for a race, usually, uh, the, the, you know, the couple of days before the race, you would go pick up, uh, you know, your packet, right? And it will come with several items. And the two things that they will usually provide, right? Actually, they always provide, I have not had an event where they do not provide, right? It's the swim cap and an ankle band, right? So the swim cap um, usually come in different colors. It will show the wave or the corral, whatever they call it, right? Um, of the part that you're in, right? So that you, you kind of know what group you're in on race day. Um, and the ankle band is basically the the chip, right? So it is the it will it will you know record your time as you hit different parts of the race, and uh, and this is something you wear on your ankle at all times, right? So uh, from starting the race all the way to the finish. Um, so what you would want to bring are swim goggles, and I suggest bringing two pairs um, because I have actually seen someone breaking his goggle uh, at the start line, right? And fortunately for him, he have another pair, right? So someone just passed him another pair. He put that on. It's all good, right? Uh, it would not be fun to have all this preparation done, all this training done, and on race day find out you don't have your goggles, right? Um, and, you know, as I said earlier, right, for swimsuit, you have to decide whether you want, like, you know, just a basic swim gear, uh, like, you know, swim dreamers or basic swimsuit, or you want something fancier, like, uh, you know, try, try top with a try pants or a try suit. Um, and for wetsuit, as I said earlier, right, you don't really need it for a super sprint race. Um, for super sprint, the time is... Your swim time is so short that the wetsuit just taking on and getting off the rest suit will probably cost you more time than the benefits that it will bring. But if you are someone completely like new to open water swimming um, and you just want to have that level of comfort, right? Having a wetsuit definitely helps. And as I said earlier, if the, you know if the race is going to be like in colder temperature, uh, wetsuit would definitely make you a lot warmer um, in the water. Um, and another thing that you may want to get, and this is more if you want if you want to get a wetsuit, is a you know just body glide or something called tri glide. That's something you want to spray on your joints, right? Like uh, your ankle and your shoulders. That would just make it easier to put on and put off and and uh, and get off the wetsuit. And <clears throat> And if you're using a watch to record the event, right, definitely uh, bring that with you. And uh, and I usually bring a towel or I just have this kind of plastic mat that I bring to races. Um, and this is good for just laying out all your stuff on the ground, right? Um, so typically when you go to a triathlon race, there will be a rail where you will have your, have to have your race number on it. You will hang your bike there, and then you know in that small space below your bike is where you lay out all your gear, right? Um, so having a towel or a mat would just make it a little bit nicer. Um, 
And on the biking part, right, um, you definitely need, you know, um, a bike and helmet and, um, and, and then you're just making sure you apply the, the race number sticker on your bike as well as your helmet because uh, for a lot of events, right, uh, people bring in, you know, very expensive triathlon bike and they wanted to make sure whoever, you know, is going in and out of their athlete's area, they are the true owner, right, of the bike. So having that race number sticker on your bike and your helmet is going to be super useful. Um, <clears throat> and there's also something called the beep belt. Uh, so if you have been doing any kind of running races, right, this usually come with a beep that you put in the front of your of your shirt, right? Uh, they have your race number on it. And a beep belt is just something that you can use that can wrap around your waist. Um, and then it will have um, uh, basically, um, you know, like a, uh, a clip that can clip on the bib. And the reason why you wanted to do that is, you know, you probably don't want to wear your bib while you're swimming. And you definitely do not want to waste a lot of time putting the bib on during, you know, either um, cycling and running. So having a belt is just making it a lot easier, right? So you don't have to like fumble and play around with all this, you know, like, uh, you know, those uh, uh, those uh, clips to figure out how to, you know, tie the bib on your on your tri shoot when you're already, you know, under time pressure in transition. Um, so definitely consider getting a bib belt that would make it just a little bit nicer. Um, and if your bike is something that comes with a, you know, different kind of, um, you know, um, you know, paddles, right? Like a, a Shimano SPD or the, you know, or uh, um, or um, or like the look um, Neo. Uh, this will be, you know, you definitely need bike cleats, right, to put on. Uh, so make sure you bring them. Um, and for me, prescription glasses, right? I actually sometimes forgot to put them on in T1 and I have to go back and it was not fun. And um, and usually, you know, this is the transition is the time where you will also refuel a little bit, right? Um, for super sprint, I just don't think you really need energy gel. But if you feel like, hey, I just did a swim or um, you want to eat something between um, the different part, you know, just take, you know, just maybe, uh, you know, just group down an energy gel or two uh, if that makes you feel better. And bike computer is also something you can put on your bike, but I honestly don't think it is useful for a six mile bike ride. Um, so I would not worry too much about, uh, you know, using a bike computer. And finally, the run part. Okay, so this part's super easy, right? So after you come back from the biking, um, uh, the biking part, right? Uh, you just, you know, if you have bike cleats, you know, get them off, put on running shoes, and off you go, right? Pretty easy. Uh, the big part, they, you know, for a lot of people to decide whether to put socks on or not after swimming. Um, I typically don't wear them for super sprint or sprint race because the biking and running part is very short. I would just run kind of, you know, just put barefoot into my running shoe and get going. Um, and the only thing I can suggest here is, you know, if you're going to run in hot or sunny weather, you may want to consider like, you know, wearing a running cap or sunglasses if that makes the run more comfortable. Great. So, <clears throat> So, so thanks you for listening to me so far, right? So now race day, right? What do, what do you need to do on race day? Um, okay, so first think about what you want to eat on race day, right? And this is something that you also want to prep a little bit um, in your practice. So let's say if you're going for like a swim on the weekend, right? Um, or the cycling, just kind of see, you know, what kind of breakfast do you want to eat, right? So usually I just eat something very light. So I'll wake up, I put on my tri suit, and then I put on some additional layers, right? Um, um, and then I would just, you know, eat something light and then get to the event. And if this is your first race, I would just suggest getting to the event, like, you know, at least an hour before start time, right? If not more, uh, just just that, you know, it's your first race, you have to park your, you know, if you're getting there by driving, you have to park your car, you have to take your bike or your gear with you, and you have to push your bike all the way, you know, to um, to prep, right? So just give yourself more time so you don't feel stressed out on race day. Um, and, you know, once you get to 
the, the venue, right? Uh, usually they'll have a rail for hanging up your bike and uh, you can see how other people do it, but usually the way people do it is they will slide the bike backwards, right? Under the rail and then they will lift the bike and basically hang, uh, use the front, uh, basically hanging the front of the, the saddle, right? Um, you know, on top of the rail. Because uh, that's the quickest way you can get your bike out. Um, and then, you know, you can lay a mat or a towel on the floor uh, just below your front wheel and just laying all your gear, right? And usually I would just, you know, the left side of my tires, all my biking stuff, right side of my tire is... Uh, uh, is all my running stuff and in some races they are really picky they actually don't like you to have your um, helmet untethered so you basically in some races and uh, they may be uh, people walking around looking for people breaking the rules right so um, so you may have one of those race official uh, tell you to okay you have to tether your helmet and then you have to hang it on your uh, on your handlebar right um, that's you know just something to keep in mind um, and one thing that is important is, you know, after you set up all your gear, you know, you put on your swimming stuff, you make you know, sometimes get a little bit too comfortable. So make sure you also listen to announcement and give yourself plenty of time um, to get to your corral uh, or your wave, right? And, you know, just put on, you know, as you get closer to start time, just put on your swim cap and goggles, stay relaxed, but listen. Uh, because one of the recent races that I did, I did not pay attention. And I was basically stuck with another group that was like five waves, below, uh, five corrals, right, behind the one that I'm supposed to be on. So I find out last minute, I have to basically, you know, run up to my corral and immediately jump inside the water. And, you know, it was not the best swim I've done, right? <laughs> uh, it was extremely difficult because I was like so tense. I'm just, you know, rushing. So just give yourself plenty of time, right, um, to get ready for swimming. And on the swimming part, oh yeah, the first thing is making sure after you put, you know, your all your swim stuff on, your goggles and cap on, that you also remember to wear your um, the ankle band, because otherwise you 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 the, you know, the, all this all the work that you did is not going to get recorded officially, right, uh, by the ra uh, the race organizer, and um, and also unless you are you know a strong swimmer and you think this will be a piece of cake, right, I suggest this staying in the back of your corral, right, to avoid traffic, um, especially if this is your first time swimming in open water. Um, what you would see typically in a race like a super sprint or sprint are there's a lot of people new to open water swimming. Um, so you see people swimming, you know, all kinds of, you know, style, right? I've seen people seeing swimming like breaststroke the whole way. Um, and, you know, and, and I would just say by staying in the back, you can kind of spot, you know, the slower traffic in front of you and you can navigate yourself around them rather than getting in the middle of it, right, with people in front and next to you and maybe sometimes in the worst case have people swimming over you, right? Um, and uh, and the good thing about a uh, super sprint or sprint event is because it's usually designed for new triathletes, so there are usually tons of lifeguards around right so in the particular race that i joined uh there's like there's almost like a dozen lifeguard uh you know al uh, along the route and you know they're just sitting on pedal boards you know waiting to see if anyone needs help um so before you start your swim you know before you uh you know you, you started your swim I would just take a look at where the lifeguards are. And sometimes I just use them as landmark or waypoints, right? To say, okay, I will aim for this lifeguard or this pedal board. I will swim towards there. Um, and then, you know, I will look for this other one and so forth, right? Because um, once you start swimming um, in open water, unless you are, you know, you have practiced a lot and you're super comfortable navigating, what you would find is that once you start swimming is that you don't really see, you know, like... Uh, the sighting only gives you like a, a brief second to look at what's in front of you. And unless you have a landmark that is very easy to spot, chances are you won't be able to see, see them during the swim. So I would just aim for those uh, pedal boards, you know, and, and, and use them, right? And also, you know, this is your first swim in open water, right? Could be your first one. Uh, you may need a break, right? Um, uh, and you may actually, you know, have trouble swimming or, you know, you get tense and you just want to rest. Um, you can just swim towards one of those lifeguards, right? And you can just hang on to their pedal boards and, you know, 
let your breath like slow down a little bit, your heart rate drops a little bit right before you continue your swim. Um, in my first race, uh, I, I swam so bad that I basically stop at almost every single pedal board right along the way. And I was the last person out of the lake. Um, super slow in the swim but i finish it right <laughs> and that's the and that's what you needed to do uh and also you know finally is you know you you train hard for the swim right uh, you got this right so stay positive right uh, and just really focusing on okay you know where's my next waypoint where's my next landmark right and just swim towards it don't think too much about the distance or how much time remaining just you know just aim for the next just have all this kind of mini milestones or waypoints laying in front of you which just make you you know make the swim a little bit easier all right, so now that you completed the swim part, right, you will get out of the lake. And if you're using, if you're recording this on a watch, you know, just press the button, switch to T1. And if you have wetsuit, this is the time, right, to get off your wetsuit, uh, goggle, swim, swim cap, and then just making sure that, especially if you wear, your wet, if you take off your wetsuit, that the ankle band is still on. Because sometimes if they're too loose, they could, you know, your wetsuit could drag it all together, right? Um, and you you could have removed it from your body. Um, and then put on, you know, glasses, uh, helmet and shoes, and maybe in an energy gel if you like. Um, and uh, making sure that you put on the helmet before you touch your bike. Um, because in many races, um, you need to help your helmet on and, you know, and... Uh, and tether because bef whenever you're using your bike. So it's just make sure um, you have your helmet on uh, when before you remove your bike and also um, uh, you know after you put only take it or take off the helmet only after you place your bike right. Um, and you know and then what you need to do next is push your bike to the start line and you just don't get on the bike before the mount line right so make sure you go past the mount line and then get on the bike and one thing you may want to practice right while you were um practicing uh biking is um is to learn how to push your bike around by you no know, i usually just you know, push my bike using the back the back of the saddle, right? And you just learn a little bit on how to push it on a straight line, make left turn, right turn a little bit. And it's not a big deal, right? Um, but it would just make it a little bit easier. And then, you know, once you get to the mount line, uh, make sure you switch your watch over to bike mode and start biking. And, you know, just also stay super positive, right? The hardest part of swimming is done. The biking part is just just enjoy the scenery, have fun, but also pay attention to other uh, cyclists around you because um, in a super sprint race, you may also come across uh, lots of uh, you know lots of participants who are new to biking, and they may suddenly stop in front of you, right? So don't follow too close, and also um, <clears throat> technically in a triathlon, you are not supposed to draft off other bikers, right? So um, so you have to stay certain distance away. So don't get too close to the bike in front of you. Uh, you know, just keep, you know, around like, you know, three, uh, three bike lengths at a minimum, right? And if you're getting close to them, just, you know, pedal a little bit harder and pass them. Um, okay, but but usually in the super sprint or sprint races, um, the official are usually not that tight on the rules, uh, but I'm, so I'm just telling you for information. Um, okay. So um, once you finish biking, right, you push your bike back to the uh, your the, um, the your bike rack, right. Put your bike on the rack, take off your helmet and bike cleats, and put on your running shoes. And if you're ready, like I typically put on the bib belt um, for biking, and then I would have my bib facing the back during biking, um, so it's not like so my knees won't be keep running into the 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 bib while I'm biking. <coughs> Sorry. And when you when it comes to running part, right? I just kind of rotate the the belt so that my bib is raising the front, and off I go. Uh, and the only thing here is just making sure you know if you're recording this, switch to run mode uh, when you're done with the transition. Great. So you know, once you finish the running part, you're done. Make sure you stop recording your watch on the finish line, and then there will be people there collecting the the ankle band and so forth, right? There will be food and drinks around. 
um, you know, congratulations, you finished your first triathlon. Um, and I hope this presentation is useful for you. Um, and, you know, and please comment, right, if this is useful for you. And I would love to hear if there's any event, right, your stories about your first triathlon. Uh, you know, just feel free to comment and also please hit subscribe if you like this channel. Thank you.